Hey everyone, it's me, Ebony Evans, and I just want to welcome you back to my channel. I'm so excited to see you guys. I'm just so excited. Um, since I have a lot of free time, really quick, um, just leave in the comments what is like just one topic that you will want me to discuss in the next week or so. Uh, I want to try to be obedient to that and just try to help y'all with what y'all going through. I know y'all enjoyed the couple video with me and my husband. So we'll definitely do more of that, okay? But I come forth to you today with a word. And before we start, let's just start out in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we lift you up right now and we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are our Abba and we can cry out to you anywhere we are. Lord, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you have your way. Lord, just bless me to give this word to your people. Lord, let them be encouraged and let them be content in all that you have for them. Father God, in the mighty name, give us a heart for your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. We pray. Amen. All right, so let me just share with y'all really, really quick. God has been giving me a lot of practicalness, and that's, you know, you are supposed to pray and ask God for specific prayers, like be specific, like let God know. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. The Bible also says to let your request be made known unto God. Um, while giving thanksgiving and stuff like that so not only are you supposed to be specific but come to God while still giving him thanks but let him know what you're dealing with let him know even though he already knows he wants to hear it from you cry out to God and so as I took a break from the world I began to do that and I began to ask God give me strategies to help me combat the enemy because the enemy started to torment me and what i mean by torment is um bring constantly bringing up old things constantly i'm um, trying to make me um focus on the past constantly trying to make me do things like that and so that's torment and so i said god give me strategic tools to combat this things that i will do every day and so god gave me that and, a, and the big component of that was meditation on his word and y'all it just just a full week of doing it has brought so much restoration and so much light and so much revelation in my heart. God is faithful, y'all. So a lot of my problem that I realized was like, it's as if I was always looking for somebody to defend me. And God had to deal with me and was like, listen, you know, I know your heart, but you got to stop looking at the world to defend you. And that could be you, you know, constantly depending on your job. That could be a defense mechanism. Um, that can be you depending on other people or the, that's like your defense mechanism. It can even be different idols in your life that, that keeps you defended or you feel like that's your safe place. And God says, no, I want to be your safe place. I want to be your rescuer. I want to be your deliverer. I want to be your savior. And so when we as humans and as children of God put our hope and trust in, in things of this world, our jobs and people and different things like that, then we're taking God's rightful place of champion defender in our life, of rescuer, of restorer, of, of well of living water. We're, we're taking his rightful place. That is who God is. The Bible says that he is our strong tower. That means that he is your fortress. He is the, he is the very thing itself that protects you from danger that protects you from threats the bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper why would that weapon not prosper because you have made jesus your defense you have made jesus jesus your strong tower but the problem is today is that we put our hope in other defenses that are not God. We put our hope in our jobs. We put our hope in our situations. We put our hope in our own ability. And we wonder why we keep falling on our face. And so I say, God, give me something practical and I want to share this with you. So I came across 
Psalm 62, 2. And I was meditating on this for about two weeks, almost three weeks now. And it says, he alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me. For he is my champion defender. There's no risk of failure with God. So why would I let worry paralyze me even when troubles multiply around me? And so God had me thinking. And I thought these thoughts because God alone is my defender. Not my own ability. Not people. Not my job. Not my, um, not my status. That, that can't defend me. God alone should be your defender. It says, because God alone is my defender, I will only look to him to defend me. No one else, no one else, not no human, not your mama, not your daddy, not your husband, not, not, not your granddaddy, nobody. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when we solely put our everything in God, the Bible says there is no risk of failure. God cannot fail. Matter of fact, that is the complete opposite of God's nature. He is the creator. He is the alpha and the omega and everything in between. He is the beginning and the last. He is the author and finisher of this world and of your life. So if we understand that if we only put our hope, our trust, and our defense in Jesus Christ, we will be more than okay. So you will never be shaken when you let God defend you. I don't know who you're dealing with. I don't know if it's, it's torment of the enemy, like something that I was dealing with. I don't know if you're dealing with um, problems in your marriages, your marriage, and you feel like um, you're not being defended and you're looking for people to have your back. I don't know if people have attacked you verbally or I don't know if family came against you. I don't know if, if people talk about you and you just want to defend yourself and you just want to go off. I don't know what has happened, but one thing I do know if you let God defend you, you are going to be blown away by the power of God. And so what I've been doing is meditating on that scripture and teaching myself that God alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me. So I'm always protected. That's how you got to think. The more you meditate on the scriptures, the more you'll realize I'm protected by God. God is for me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am protected by a living God. My God is alive. My God has risen. I am blown away by the power of God for he is my champion defender. He defends defends me better than I can ever defend myself. There's no risk of failure with God. And so I put this to the test, y'all. And I just began to meditate on it. And instead of nagging and complaining about things, I just began to meditate on this. And I started to question myself, well, Ebony, if God is my champion defender and there is no risk of failure with God, why have I not gave this situation to him? So I say from this day forward, this situation belongs to God. Out of your mouth proclaim from this day forward, this situation that's been holding me down and holding me back belongs to the one true living God. He is my champion defender. Instead of complaining about it, I'm going to deliberately say and deliberately do and deliberately give this to you, Father God, because I can't do this on my own. We were not designed to handle these things on our own. We were designed to put our hope and trust in Jesus. That's why the Bible says that his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So even though from the natural eye, you surrendering to God, it looks weak to the people around you, but it's stronger than anything they can ever see. Because the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than man. The weakness of God is stronger than man. Now, Apostle Paul was talking about this in context referring to the cross. Because think about it. What's more foolish to men than to see um, 
somebody who claimed to be God, which they were, because Jesus was God in the flesh. But to the natural man, they was like, this man claimed to be God, but he's crucified. He's on the cross. What is more foolish than that to the natural eye? But the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than man. The weakness of God is stronger than man. So when we say we're going to let God take his rightful place in our lives by defending us and by surrendering our own weapons of natural warfare and picking up our weapons of spiritual warfare, which is just trusting in God's word and believing God at his word. The Bible says to the naked eye that is foolish, but to God that is mighty, powerful and strong. To the naked eye, it is weak. But to God, you are more powerful than anything that comes against you. Because you are allowing God to defend you. So what's foolish to the people that's around you is uh, uh, they're not going to respond. They're not going to say nothing. No, because God is your champion defender. You got to find peace in the scriptures. You have to find peace. Let me tell you something. The more you meditate on what God is telling you to do, how many of y'all feel like you need practicalness? Because I often feel that way where I'm like, God, give it to me straight. Like, I need something right now because I want to please you and I need to do what I have to do. And God began to break that scripture down and he began to show me, stop reverting to defending yourself. Or stop reverting to always feeling like you got to have your own back. God said, I am your father. I will defend you from poverty. I will defend you from um, anger. I will defend you from those who come against you. I will defend you from unhealthiness. I will defend you from people that don't like you. I will defend you from people that talk about you and you don't even have to open your mouth. That means that we need to get active in our prayer lives. And I'm going to give you a couple practical things that's been helping me with that. So the Bible says, bless are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's Matthew 5 verse 3. Bless are the poor, poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, blissful and fortunate are those who are totally dependent upon God for everything. So God is saying, what situation are you facing right now? Are you totally dependent on me? Because I am your champion defender. I will defend you from the wiles and the schemes of the enemy, but you have to be totally dependent on me. So I guarantee you, you can think of something right now instantly where you know you've been battling this, you've been worrying about it, anxiety has been plaguing your mind, and God says, you are not totally dependent on me because you keep letting worry overtake me you keep letting worry surpass me in your heart God says be totally dependent on me because you will see the kingdom of heaven for theirs is the kingdom of heaven okay so number one we have to be totally dependent on God okay we have to be totally dependent on God Say, I am totally dependent on God. That means that you depend on God for every single thing. That's one way that you can allow him to be your champion defender, okay? Another way, practical tools. It says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Stay thirsty, my friends. For God alone, stay thirsty, not of the things of this world, not of the riches and the glam and the posts on Instagram. No, you stay thirsty for the spirit of the living God. When he's calling you three o'clock in the morning, arise. Get up there. Spend your time with God. Give him your first fruits in the morning. Give him your time in the morning. Before you do anything, say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, what do you want me to do today? Lord, have your way in my heart. The Bible says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. This is a practical tool. This is how you can allow God to defend you by you being alert and by you being hungry and desperate for God himself and only himself all right so stay thirsty for God 
Okay, another one, another practical tool um, to combat, you know, torment and another practical tool to help allow God to be your champion and defender is um, it says, bless all the pure in heart for they shall see God. Okay, so stay innocent. If you have an enemy or people that you're dealing with, you don't know how to deal with them. You're constantly plagued with trying to react or anything like that. Um, listen to this. It says, so what makes you pure? Okay. Actively doing the will of God. Listen, it says, bless all the pure in heart for they shall see God. Okay. So what makes you pure? Actively doing the will of God. So despite how you feel, you're still going to do what God told you to do. I'm going to repeat that. Despite how you feel, this is how you stay pure. Despite how you feel, a.k.a. the flesh, you will still be obedient to what God told you to do. Okay? So what makes you pure? Actively doing the will of God. That means every day, all day, being intentional about pleasing God some way, somehow. Okay? So, stay pure and innocent when it comes to evil, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. So, if you're dealing with people that come against you, if you're dealing with co-workers on your job that you can't stand, if you're dealing with um, people talking about you, if you're dealing with in-laws, whatever the case may be, stay pure. Stay pure. Well, Ebony, how do I stay pure? Well, let's see. Look, in Matthew 5, your ancestors have also been taught, love your neighbors and hate the ones who hate you. However, Jesus said, look, love your enemy. Bless the one who curses you. Do something wonderful for the one who hates you and respond to the very ones who persecute you by praying for them. So how do we stay pure? By doing what the word of God says. Pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who mistreat you. mistreat you. Pray for those who are actively coming against you. God says this is one way that you can stay pure. And when we actively do the will of God, he is going to actively defend us in ways that no eye has seen and no ear has heard. Another practical tool in um, staying innocent and just allowing God to defend us is it says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So look, y'all, some people just not going to like you. That's just what it is. But how enriched you will be when you bear the wounds of doing what is right regardless. And sometimes it hurts to do what is right, a.k.a. bear the wounds, right? But you will experience heaven's kingdom realm. Simply because you are a child of God, you will be treated differently from different people. Some missions are sent to give you a hard time. But no matter what, you build an altar. You give that hurt and that pain to Jesus Christ. And what God is going to do in turn is he's going to rise you up. The Bible says he's going to bruise Satan under your feet sh shortly. So that means that you are getting ready to receive power. That power is already working in your midst because you are actively doing the will of God. You are actively seeking out righteousness. You are actively doing what God told you to do in his word. You are actively allowing God to defend you. You're not seeking a ways of revenge. You're not seeking a ways to get even. You're not seeking a ways to hurt. You're simply saying, Lord, I want you to defend me in this matter. And that means that you don't need to say a word. God is preparing you. So I say all of this to say, let God be your champion defender. He will never, ever fail. You are his child. Do you know what more God will do in your life? When you show him, Lord, I'm going to live for you and I'm not going to let this matter take me out. I'm going to trust you at your word. I'm going to believe you at your word. And I know you're going to defend me. And your defense is better than what I want because your defense is a righteous defense. Your defense is a holy defense. Your defense is something that is going to bear me I'm, I'm going to receive eternal gifts in heaven. I'm just building up my treasure in heaven. Those are the gifts of God. 
So let God defend you. And this is coming from somebody who has put this to use. And I have been blown away by the supernatural power of God. Everything that I was worried about. When I finally gave it to God. Okay, that it is so cool. The weapons that was formed did not prosper. Listen to me. The weapons that was formed did not prosper because I allowed God to defend me. I said I am not going to fight this with my own natural weapons. I am going to surrender my weapons and I am going to give this to the Lord. And God blew me away. He blew me away. So I pray that this video was encouraging to you. I, I pray that you will learn and you will allow the Father to defend you. For he is the only one that is worthy. Okay? Alright guys, I'm so excited. Don't forget about the sleepover encounter. Tickets are on sale. It is August 14th through the 16th. And I am so excited, you guys. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. We are going to have a Holy Ghost party. And it is going to be so refreshing. And I'm telling you, God is going to move in such a mighty beautiful way i really cannot wait y'all i'm so excited so for more information visit www.ebonyshaneevans.com and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye